Uh, clerk coming back in? Yeah, let's wait on the clerk. If it won, let's just hope. Has anybody notified her? Oh, well, she, was, she was just standing out there. Would you uh, know or that? Okay. Becky? I don't. Oh, sure. Okay. I think she's. My understanding she was going to come back. We were going to do it earlier. She's coming. She's on the way. Okay, we're good. Let's wait then. Becky, do you want this on the record or off the record? Your question. Um, it can be off. Okay, before you call back in the session, sir, okay. Miss Miss Norris. Off the record. That's my, that was my question. You're calling the closed one back in the session, and then you'll have to give me a few minutes to start a new one. Okay. okay. And All right. I'm, I'm a little breezy. Over. When you get ready, you just. All right. Let us know. Try it again. All right. Now we're open in public session. Mr. Chairman, attorney, thank you, sir. You. you made a motion in your closed attorney client session to come back out onto the public record for your emergency county meeting notice for today, July 7th, Tuesday at um, 8 a.m., which when your meeting began. Um, Ms. Trudy Downs is still uh, providing court reporting services, and you are back in open public meeting. Um, during your closed session, you had the opportunity to hear from special counsel and representatives of the Nix Patterson firm, as well as Beasley Allen, um, and you had recommendations. Um, it was the vote of the board to come back out into public, um, open public meeting. Um, I have some initial forms, and you've heard the comments of, of counsel. Um, I'd ask the commission if there's any questions of either the uh, Mr. Bizet, Mr. Jones, or myself before we move forward and ask for if there's any motions of this board. All right. Any questions from the board? Any board members? Anyone? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If there's any uh, motions or recommendations of the commission instructing the attorneys and myself to move forward, uh, we could House hopefully entertain it on the record. And I can read a formal uh, presentation on anything you introduce. I think from closed session to now, I think uh, I feel comfortable with the numbers that were presented, with the, with everything that that, that Ron and, and Billy had, had had brought forward with the for the board. I would make a motion to proceed with that uh, agreement and do all the necessary paperwork and, and and also allow the chairman to sign any documents that need to be signed and just proceed forward. All right, uh, motions on the floor. <clears throat> Uh, I second that motion, but Mr. Turner, would you give the correct number? Yes, sir. I will do that. The board one more time in the public. Yes, sir. Um, Commissioner Yeager, and, and I believe there's a motion and a second. What I'll do is I'll read that in the form of a resolution with the actual number in entail. We'll do one for each of the proposed settlements, um, so I can read them. Um, the first resolution on that motion would read as follows. A resolution of Gulf County in the state of Florida accepting the full and final settlement of all claims against BP and others resulting from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, authorizing the execution and delivery of a general release and other necessary documents and providing for an effective and immediately effective date. Be it resolved that Gulf County in the state of Florida hereby accepts BP's offer to pay in the amount with regards to the TDC would be the first resolution of $261,592 
in economic losses and as a full and final settlement of all claims against BP and others resulting from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. And be it further resolved that the Gulf County uh, Commissioner, Chairman Ward McDaniel is authorized and directed to execute and deliver to BP a general release in the form attached here to of all release, all damages resulting from or associated with the Deepwater water horizon oil spill in favor of BP and all entities associated with the incident as listed in the attached release, which form and substance are hereby approved, and it be further resolved that the execution release shall be deemed conclusive evidence of the approval and acceptance of the release. This release re resolution shall take effect immediately upon its execution, and it's resolved, passed, and approved, and adopted on today's date, July 7th, uh, during this emergency county meeting. That would be the first resolution and authorization under that motion. Again, $261,592. And that's on the TDC? Yes, sir. All right. Any further board discussion, Commissioner? When? Brian. Commissioner? Commissioner? All right. Anyone in the public? You've heard the attorney? Anyone? Not? Any opposition to Commissioner Yeager's motion? Not. The motion passes 5 and 0 oh to proceed. Mr. Attorney? Yes, sir. Um, I'll read the second by title. It was the same whereas in uh, resolve resolution clauses, um, but I'll summarize the counties. It will read as follows. The resolution of Gulf County in the state of Florida accepting a full and final settlement of all claims against BP and others resulting from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill authorizing the execution and delivery of a general release and other necessary documents and providing for an effective date immediately. Be it resolved that Gulf County in the state of Florida Hereby accepts BP's offer to pay the amount of $751,126 in economic losses as a full and final settlement of all claims against BPs and others, BP and others resulting from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Uh, be it resolved that the uh, chairman uh, is authorized and directed to execute and deliver to BP a general release in the form attached here to of all damages resulting from or associated with the Deepwater Horizon oil spill and then it has the further uh, resolution clauses. Um, this would be in addition to the TDC sum. Again, it's $751,126 for the county. All right. Do you, do you need a motion for that one also? Or is it yes, okay. yes, sir. So, yeah. so moved, Mr. Chairman. We're doing it. For that particular resolution. Okay. Yeah. And that motion amount. by Commissioner Yeager. Second with a question. <clears throat> sure. We've got a second over here. Question. Go ahead. You have the floor. Yeah, Mr. Attorney, would you give us the correct number minus the attorney's fee? We need to know what the county is going to receive. Y yes, sir. The, the the global settlement will be one million uh, one million twelve thousand dollars. I don't have the exact fee because I don't have the costs that are to the to the dollar. So I don't have that for you right now, but I can get that to the county when they give us the distribution and final release. Okay. I, I think I'm close then. The way I see it, it's $751,000 that we're going to receive. According to the attorneys, there are approximately 26000 of that 751 that they're going to that, yeah. That's expenses. That's, okay. that's just expenses, sir. The, the fees are separate and apart from the costs. The costs for the last five years from the one firm, they estimate and I know they've worked on those considerably, but it's $26,000 right now. So that comes off 751 and then their fees come off of whatever the net And we don't have are. a clue of what the fees well, is because, so therefore we don't, we don't have a clue with actually what the county's going to receive at the end of the day. Right now the county is going to receive $1,012,000 and then from that the cost and fees are going to be taken out for the two firms. So I don't have that exact figure, but when they do provide that to us after the 15th, we'll have a distribution form, and it'll show exactly how much the county is receiving and netting out. I know right. before, um, Commissioner, that we, we, no. oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. But you want to you you finish for it? Yeah. Okay, all right. let's hold here. Oh, Come on. Because I see it going on right now. You know the headline. The county is receiving $1,012,000. That's what's going to read in your paper. That's what's going to misjudge the public there. We're not going to receive... Yes, sir. One million twelve thousand dollars. Sir, and, I, it, and, and again, I I don't have a calculator. I have a distribution form. I don't want to speak for the firms, but at the end of the day, if and these are ballparks, but I believe it's somewhere between twenty five percent. So I think somewhere around seven hundred and twenty five to seven hundred fifty thousand. I think would be an approximate number that the county would ultimately receive from that gross one million dollars. Is it that's better? 
Okay. And, but and again, please don't this? hold me to numbers because I don't have the. I, mean, I don't have the. This commission here. in 2010, I believe, in July of 2010, entered uh, engagement and contracts. Right. Okay. I don't have them with me. Um, it was before my time, but I certainly can go back and get them and give you each commissioners individually what those breakdowns are. And and once this is reached with BP, then they can go in and give you hard numbers. But I think it's somewhere between 25 and 30 percent you're going to be paying in attorney's fees in addition to the costs. Uh, is it all right if I mention, I mean, now everything's open. Is it all right if I mention what we were originally uh, offered in, in the Gulf County? I, I, I would just, like I said, at this time, you... You're free to speak about whatever you'd like to, commissioners, but I would tell you, you have okay. authorized the settlement. The sealed records, when this is reached, the sealed records that you've gone into closed, right. but it is considerably more. Considerably. Okay. That was the point. And the sealed records will become public record of your closed sessions over the last four and a half years. So the public tomorrow and forever will have a record of what you were offered and what you are authorizing today through your motion. Um, Yes, that, that's the numbers as I have them right now. Any, any other? Mr. Ryan? Yes. Audience? All right. Motion by Commissioner Yeager. Your second stand. Second by Commissioner McLemore. Any opposition to Mr. Yeager's motion? No opposition. Motion passes 5 and 0. Mr. Chairman, you've uh, been authorized to sign both resolutions um, as well as the authorization form. And uh, Mr. Bazette, Mr. Jones will go forward and work in the next eight days to uh, get this resolved with uh, BP. So I thank you for your time this morning. I don't know, um, Ron, Billy, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Okay. If there's nothing else, then we can conclude the emergency meeting. Mr. Deal. A motion. Second, but I, I did want to—I want to make mention because the public didn't hear this. This is just the the lawsuit to, to BP that comes directly to the county. It has nothing to do restore or the overall settlement. There's there's more dollars that that will be coming to Gulf County. Now they did split them up a little bit more, and and I won't go into detail with that right now. But I did want the public, general public, to know this is just one. This is the lawsuit, and there's more dollars coming. Mr. Yeager, um, I provided you a fact summary sheet to the commissioners during closed session. Um, everybody's seen the $18.5 billion number and how it's proposed to break down. When all signatures are provided and all the parties and all the five states and all the governmental entities, when everyone reaches this global settlement, that breakdown will have a figure. Um, we're having restore committee meetings. We'd encourage the public to come so they understand what the figures are projected at now for the county um, in addition in addition to the Triumph Fund, as well as the NERDA funds that are going to be flowing to the county. So a considerable amount more. All right. Hello, Mr. Attorney. Else? Now we're going to close this. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. A motion to close. I believe you had one, right? Got a motion to close. Yeah. Did we have them? We did. Yeah. All right. Any objection to us closing? Not. This portion is closed. Okay. Ms. Downs, thank you. Ron, Billy, you're more than welcome to stay around. If not, I hope you have both of you gentlemen have a safe trip back thank you very much. to your destinations. Yes. Looking forward to seeing you again. Yes, sir. All right, thank you, sir. All right, we're going to take just a moment here. May have to.
Trudy, thank you. Have a safe trip and tell your husband I ask and hope everything's well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, dear. Sir. Madam Clerk? Ready. All right. Now, we're going to call to order for the special meeting on July the 7th, 2015. Order of business be the uh, be item A, board meeting rules and procedures and policy. Attorney, you want to make any comments? Sure, on Mr. Chairman. Um, when I spoke with you and the administrator, you guys um, asked that the uh, public meeting be held immediately after our emergency meeting this morning. Um, it also asked for, uh, to revise and to review the policy that was initially introduced on June 23rd. Um, I had concluded that and provided that to each of the commissioners yesterday. I have a hard copy today as well um, for your review if you didn't have a chance to print it out. Um, so I'll provide that to Commissioner Quinn and let him pass it down to you. What I Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, at your last regular meeting on June 23rd, um, I had um, read through and summarized the board rules of procedure and policy with regards to Gulf County. Um, it is something that's been uh, adopted in some of the other 67 counties in one form or fashion into how they conduct their meetings. Um, you had adopted Robert's Rules of Order, uh, I think, seven or eight years ago under a previous board, um, and this... Uh, supersedes that moving forward. This gives you a local rules under a local policy. It's not an ordinance. It is a policy of your board and the five of you. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you all have with regards to the procedure and policy for your board meetings. Right, sir. Any of the, uh, anyone, any of the commissioners have any questions? Anyone? Um, Mr. Chairman, yes, I you're recognized. Um, this uh, revision that came out last night, I, I believe it was just after five. Can, can you, Mr. Chairman, can you walk, walk us through some of the revisions since we're receiving it at the last minute of what's changed from the one that was distributed at the last meeting? Uh, Commissioner, I'll let the attorney because I have a copy that I printed off last night and Mark. I made two copies, but I don't. I didn't bring that one with me. Would you? Oh, so you yes, you Chairman. also just received it last night. You're not aware of the changes either. I got I got the changes last night. Yeah, you did too. Okay, that's so what we all I, did at the same time. Well, um, yeah, it's I I think it's um it's difficult for this board to vote on these changes when we all received them last night after five. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy. It's just minor, minor. All we need to do is hear the changes. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Mr. Attorney, now everyone sure. hold Mr. Um, Attorney, but you, uh, you can turn to the page and the where I, you want to go. I'd be happy to. To start front to back, okay? Um, last week, following your June 23rd meeting, um, I had an opportunity to sit with uh, Ms. Norris and Ms. Roberts, and I thanked them. We sat for about close to two hours and reviewed the policy. I wanted to get the constitutional officer's feedback as this impacts them as much as it does you because they assist you in running your meetings. So there's the procedural rules and policy and then working with Ms. Norris and her many years of experience, um, we got her feedback in Leanna's as well and we made um, various changes. So I'll go through. First and foremost on the first page under purpose, there's an additional sentence at the end. It reads, this policy shall also serve to guide the policy and procedure of all county boards, committees, in the conduct of their assigned tasks. Uh, you are adopting this, but as your other policies, you institute them, you have many 
advisory boards, PDR, bo PDR board, uh, your RAC committee, going down the line, um, your HCP committee. So if this policy is adopted by this commission, what your expectation is that your advisory boards and chairs that serve them will conduct themselves in the same manner as that you hold yourselves to. On the second page under uh, regular meetings, on the third line, it says, according to Florida statute, has been added. The R and the M in resolution and motion throughout that paragraph have been capitalized. And at the final sentence, it reads, the commission members present and all meetings shall be open to the public. So the terms and all meetings have been added. Paragraph 5, at the very end, the sentence and the purpose given for the special meeting is included in the minutes other than just the manner and method in which the notice is provided. So the language and the purpose given for the special meeting. Continuing on in 5B, halfway down on the second page, it reads, whenever such emergency meeting is called, persons calling the meeting and the county administrator, we've added, and the county clerk shall make a good faith attempt to notify the members of the commission. Not solely the administrator, but the clerk is the function of this board and an assistant in helping you facilitate your meetings. And so we've added the county clerk to that sentence. Under D, under public hearing and procedures, You'll see the word, uh, you'll see county public speaking ordinance. We've added, as well as board policies, including but not limited to the telephone conference, in parentheses, polycom system policy for the board member participation as well. So your public hearings now references the ability, and what's the policy you've adopted in the past to allow a county commissioner who has a conflict to participate via, I believe your Leanna called it the polycom, is the is the technical term, but it's a telephone conference system, as I believe you had commissioners now participate. So that's been added as well on the recommendations yeah. of the clerk. Number seven is pre chair presiding officer duties. You'll see the fourth sentence down. It says, instead of the presiding officer, it simply states the chair, so we have some consistency, and shall be responsible for providing uh, language. And then two sentences below that, it says the chair upon request of the commission with assistance from the clerk and staff. Originally, it just said the chair shall repeat every motion. Now it's a request of this commission. So if the commission wants the motion repeated, the chairman will receive that request. And with assistance from Leanna and Ms. Norris, they'll repeat the motion from the record so that you all can hear it restated. Just some additional support and clarity. Uh, in reviewing number nine with regards to agenda, A, B, and C are all the same. Uh, D, with regards to additions, deletions, or corrections, has been deleted in discussing it with Ms. Norris. Um, we believe it added more confusion than it did clarity with regards to the amendments to the agenda. Um, so that's been struck from uh, Section 9. And therefore, it goes A, B, C, and then E, originally E, becomes D. D, on the fifth sentence down, reads, but no later than five calendar days before every non-emergency meeting, and we've added the word and post agenda, consent agenda summary pages. Um, the ladies in the clerk's office asked if we was our intent in that language to post all 60 or 100 pages on the courthouse window. What we want to do is offer clarity to say it's just the summary pages for the consent. You have your consent and your consent summary and the agenda, three pages generally, that are posted on the courthouse. If they want the full record, they can go and get that from the clerk's office. So that language clarifies what we actually post. Uh, number 11, with regards to board member decorum, on the second sentence, it says we've added the word, the following procedures, and this, it, it did read are in effect. It said, now it reads, shall be in effect. C, under breach of decorum, had presiding officer. Again, I replaced that with the word term chairman, so it is clear, there's more clarity, and it's consistent with the previous terms of the chairman. Your next page under uh, H, um, those two paragraphs have been swi uh, switched. So what was originally I, we discussed it, um, and the clerk and I agreed that the I originally should come before the H um, because it encompasses the final refusals to comply. So what was originally I now is H, and it reads, members are prohibited from using text messaging and instant messaging during public hearings. That is now H, and your original H is now I with regards to refusal to comply. Under 12, the clerk minutes, the language in the term certify has been replaced with the word attest. 
as Ms. Norris indicated, they don't certify, they attest to the minutes of your records. Um, in addition to that, uh, the final sentence has been amended to read, to any person requesting such documents in accordance with both public record laws and county public record policies, and replacing person desiring them at prescribed dates. Um, we felt as though it was a stronger term. The next page under voting, there is three references to I or no, and I indicated that it was clear it was either I or nay or yes or no, so we've indicated and we just supplanted that word, and now it's a, either a vote of yes or no that we'd ask you for. Um, so that was just a, a nuance. Uh, under exhibit, I'm sorry, under abstention, D, you'll see under uh, subsection 3, the memorandum of voting conflict, when a commissioner abstains from a voting, uh, an official vote, we ask that they fill out the Form 8B. The clerk asked that we uh, amend the language to read into the meeting minutes by reference versus as an exhibit. So Ms. Roberts, when she does the minutes, will reference the Form 8B and she'll reference them in your meeting minutes and their official county record, your abstention forms 8B and they're on record with the clerk's office. They're just not attached, but they are by reference in the minutes. And that's how they consistently have done that. Um, in the past. Fifteen under rules of debate under B, getting, getting the floor improper references to be avoided instead of the term into chorus, um, I put the word inappropriate in. Uh, under C, under interruption, the second sentence now has the additional language that uh, unless it is a call that a member to order and then it says by addressing such call to the chair. If there's an interruption during the meeting from the commission, just so that make so it further elaborate on it, any objection um, during the meeting will be addressed to the chair. The, the chair will suspend the meeting. He'll address the motion and the call, and then he'll go back and address that before going back. But again, consistent with other language, it address all such motions and and comments to the chair. Uh, Sixteen under commissioner comments, the two words. Under the sixth sentence down, it reads as follows. The commission may also request the preparation of proclamations, so two terms, and adoption. So it's the preparation and adoption of proclamations um, may be requested from the commission has been added. Under 17, under adjournment, the first five words, after conclusion of the board's agenda, a motion to adjourn shall always be in order and decided without debate. Um, so the terms, after conclusion of the board's agenda. The next page, under 20, suspension of rules, the final sentence is, with exception of these, those rules dealing with decorum, civility, and respect. Again, paragraph 20 now ties back into paragraph 15 by reference, and those eight words have been added. 23, this is, the has been changed to these, and rule has been changed to rules. Under 24, the the policy effective date, which was originally introduced in June, has been changed to shall become effective upon adoption. And 25, with regards to codification, um, we just reworded it and it reads as follows. It is the intention of the Board of County Commissioners that the provisions of this policy be adopted at a such future time, if feasible, and codified. And the sections of this policy and resolution may be renumbered or relettered or such appropriate word or phrase in order to accomplish such intention. And then lastly, the duly adopted date of June has been changed to July on the final page. Those are the changes in the amendment, sir. So moved and I thank the clerk for a time. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll second for discussion. There's one question. Just a minute. Hold just I'm a minute. Sorry. Okay. One question have I four. have, and, and I guess it's okay, but I just... There's a lot of time. All of us work, or I said, most of us work outside of here, and from time to time I get a text from my office that I really need to reply to. So now we're saying that no text, I can't respond to any text. Is that what this policy is basically saying now? Yes, sir. I just want to leave the phone at the house then? Okay. All right. I, I'm okay with that. Probably Mr. appropriate. Mr. Chairman, I did, there's one other in, in Section 3 under definitions. Um, we provided definitions of all the commissioners and the staff. In addition to that, there was a 
definition of a commission meeting, which has been added as the final sentence. And I'd like to read that as well. Uh, sure. Commission meeting shall mean the regular, special, or emergency meeting of a majority of the commissioners to consider and take official action as the elected representatives of and on behalf of the citizens of Gulf County. The public may attend, observe, provide comment during said commission meetings consistent with the county public speaking ordinance when called upon, but shall not disrupt nor supersede the purpose of the official meeting, which shall remain to carry on the and conduct the business of the county in accordance with the meeting rules of procedure stated herein. And those are all the changes that have been made. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right, your second. Yeah, Stand. Yeah. Put this motion on the floor to adopt by Commissioner McLemore, second by Commissioner Yeager. All right. Any other board member have any discussion? If you do, be recognized. Mr. Chairman, I. We're going to recognize the uh, Commissioner Bryan. You have the floor, Commissioner. Well, you know, I would like to state that uh, in the opening paragraph of this um, proposed policy, it talks about public discussion or comment, and we really not have not had an opportunity for public discussion or comment because this was introduced at the last regularly scheduled meeting. It was not on the agenda. It was introduced, um, and we we did table it. Now, this is a special meeting. That was scheduled yesterday morning, and most of the public don't, they don't really know that we're meeting, and the ones, many of them that do know we're meeting couldn't be here because they do have previously scheduled commitments that they can't change with 24-hour notice. So I would say that, that this is um, something that was not subject to public discussion or comment, so that, that opening paragraph is incorrect. Um, Really, when you look at this, I don't think anybody on this board would want this more than I would when you, when you read what it prevents. Um, I think that I've been the subject of, of much uh, personal attack here. And I'm not given the opportunity to respond properly many times unless I fight for that opportunity. But what worries me about this policy is the application and it's going to be on, on you Mr. Chairman this if the board adopts this policy it shifts quite a considerable amount of power to the chairman of this board and you can have boards where the power is equal and the chairman simply conducts the meeting which is in, in my opinion the way this county commission should um, be run. We should all be equal in, in our authority, and the chairman should conduct the meeting. But this policy does shift considerable amount of power to the chairman. Now, in, it does not speak to the staff members, how the staff members are affected by the policy. It talks about the board members, and it talks about the chairman, and it talks about the public and what is required of you. And I, I know that we have all seen that there are times when a staff member will speak um, in ways that this policy prohibits. So my question would be, how are we going to address that? Um, it talks about having an agenda, but does not discuss agenda detail. And I, that is something that I've recommended to this board since um, since I became a member of it. And I, I think that's something that we need to look at. When we put something on the agenda and it's very broad, we, we need to be a, a little more defining. We don't want to narrow it down that it's so narrow in scope that, that it um, eliminates any discussion. But for instance, beach driving issues, that, that was something that we had already passed. And people didn't realize that we were going to expand on it. Many people thought we were just going to look at fines. Uh, you know, they really didn't know. So I would like to ask this board to be a little bit more defining in w when items are placed on the agenda. Um, now, we've moved to one meeting per month, and we're putting these rules in place for how that meeting is conducted. And we've already had to schedule a special meeting with five items, 24-hour notice. And the, the discussion about one meeting a month was so that the staff would have time to prepare. But the special meetings, we get nothing. That, there's not even, you know, we get one sheet of paper with a, 
a very brief list on it of what we're going to discuss. There's no supporting documentation, and, and this was immediately after the board change. I, I think that this one meeting a month is a mistake. Um, the, the other issue I have, and, I, and I'm just putting my issues on the record because I, I, I know this is something that you all are clearly um, on board with, so I just want to put my concerns on the record. Under this, under this policy, the chairman would appoint the citizen committees, and I think that this board should appoint citizen committees. I think that we should all be weighing in when we appoint a citizen committee. Now, um, that should be a vote of the board, and it should not be up to the chairman, particularly when we're in a county that has district voting, and you are represented by a commissioner, and we all represent the whole county, but you have no say when you go to the ballot box, or you cannot vote on the other commissioner. So when we're moving all this power to the chairman and the county administrator, um, it really does disenfranchise. It, it has the possibility of disenfranchising voters in the county. My, my other concern is that this policy will apply to all boards under the county. So that also shifts that power and authority to the chairman of those boards. And when we have a citizen's board that is appointed, I want all those citizens to have the same authority on that board. And it, and it, it really flies in the face of what our, you know, our country is founded on, our open government. It's supposed to be an open government by the people, for the people. And we should be here with open discussion. And, and even if we don't like it, and even if we disagree, it should be open discussion. This is where we should flesh it out with the public sitting here watching us. It may not be pretty, but let, let's get it done. And, and if the ending result can be good, then who cares what it looks like when you see the sausage being made. But let's see it. So my concern is the application of this policy and in because because the public hasn't really had a chance to weigh in on it because um, of the power that is shifted to the chairman uh, I don't agree with this policy and my other concern is that the the board can decide if a commissioner can only speak once and the chairman decides that that's enough and the board can it can be challenged, but the board could say that is enough. But we oftentimes have situations where a commissioner or a staff member will put things out in the public on the record, and then a commissioner is not permitted to respond, and that's inappropriate. This is our only place to speak to the public. So I hate for us to put a policy in place that has a chilling effect on that. Any other commissioner? Let me make one comment on this in the procedures. <coughs> a vote, majority vote of the commission override the chair. Chair be overridden by the combination of three members or a majority. I want you to understand that. All right. Uh, Anything else? Commissioner Quinn, do you have anything on it? All right. Do what? No, I'm good. I, okay. All right. We all have it. It's for all of us, not but anyone in the public. Have any questions or concerns? All right, sir, come up. start yet. I'll let you know. I'm a little surprised that at the attendance um, here. I'm sorry. For the record, it's, it's procedure. Don't start yet. I get my full three minutes. Tom Green, 8513 Trade Winds Drive, Fort St. Joe, Florida, 32456. Tom, thank you for coming out this morning. It, All right. I had to get up in the middle of the night to get here by 8.30, oh, by the oh, way, why? but that's the other All right. the same Are time. you ready? I'm ready. All right. 
First of all, first of all, let me say that I, I concur fully with what Commissioner Bryan just had to say about an observation about this issue. Uh, the, one of the problems we have with this, with, with the way Gulf County does business, is open discussion and advanced knowledge to the public about what's going to happen at these meetings. Now I'm going to state some opinions that I have, and they, some of them may sound offensive, and I'm sorry if they do, and I apologize in advance for it. The issue has always been government accountability to the governed who are the public. Government accountability to the public who elects you and pays your salaries. I am most upset about this new monthly meeting versus the bi-weekly. Bi-weekly means twice a month, monthly means once a month, okay, by the bi-weekly meetings and the elimination of those. I see this as another opportunity for you guys to continue with the business of the public outside the public view and the public perspective. That's the way I see it. This has been a long-term trend of this government as it continues to remain, in my opinion, in transit into the public will, immersed in we always did it this way, or the public perspective isn't worth it. That's my opinion about how this operates. I've watched it, and, and the, the public's view of the same thing turned around is nothing but cronyism and, and corruption. That's the public's viewpoint of, of, of the reaction to what I just said. This began years ago when we took the twice monthly meetings that occurred every evening and the Board of County Commissioners decided to have it in the morning as a, at, with strong objective and input from the public not to do that. But the Board said it's for the convenience of the staff. They work hard. So in order for the, the Board says for the convenience of the staff, I, convenience of the staff I pay, we're going to have meetings that make it hard for me to get to or hard for the public to get to. The, the twice monthly meeting, uh, evening versus mornings, was a long uh, debate, again, and now we're going to a simple monthly meeting. I want to know why. Staff convenience, again, give me a break. How about public convenience? So I don't know why we're going to monthly meetings. By the way, all you're going to do with monthly meetings, because the staff demands this thing to work and the staff is probably isn't, isn't efficient, as they say, and that's what I'd say about Commissioner Bryan, the problem is your staff is not efficient, which is why you can't get agenda items in advance. I told you somebody's opinions are going to sound offensive. I apologize for them, okay, in advance, but, but that's my perspective. So now we're going to monthlies. And the end result of monthlies is going to be weekly emergencies, weekly specials, weekly uh, uh, get the agenda straight, and still through the whole process, because you, they're not scheduled, they're not well organized, and they're not prepared in advance, the public will remain uninformed about what's going to happen at the meeting. Move okay. to extend. Uh, you, 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 so it, just a minute. There's just time. All right. Part of the problem, another part of the problem. Wait, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Motion to extend. Here. Sorry. In your time, do I hear a second? A second. Let him go ahead. Motion. All in favor. So right. Tom, proceed. Bring back. The issue is clear agendas in advance of the meeting, and then what you'll have is meetings that are well organized, well, well, well conducted, and you won't have to have one commissioner who has created some of this hostility, which I believe leads to these meetings. One commissioner keeps saying, why, how much, who says so, <laughs> and why, and what's going on here? By the way, the one commissioner who does this is the commissioner for the largest, most populous district in the county with the greatest number of registered voters. And so that commissioner, largest district in the county, most, num most registered voters in the county, is the one that keeps being told, we don't know why, quit asking. Or, or vice versa. The debate rules. You've talked about the debate rules, and while they are not outrageous, it comes down to shutting down public discussion whenever the commissioner wishes to do so, whenever the chairman wishes to do so. I believe that's too much power in the hands of the chairman. You said, yes, you can do the same, but good luck with that. We have a history in this county of unpopular issues, okay, being dealt with with oppression, coercion, and ignoring it. I can give you some examples, and the staff doesn't respond to you. I'll give you some, doesn't respond to you. Let's talk America's Ditch. America's Ditch ended after a big discussion with, well, we won't try to find out who did the wrong thing. We won't try to find out how we got awarded an illegal bid, okay? We won't try to do that. We'll get Mr. Rich, and he'll go fix the problem, come back and tell us. The detailed letter 
of agreement worked out with Mr. Rich to do this. Mr. Rich went away. I assume he did it because it's been two and a half years since we got any feedback from the staff on the subject of what he said, what he did, or what he thought. Mr. Butler was asked at one meeting, where is it? About six months ago, seven months ago, Mr. Butler's response was, well, he's almost done. I expect to bring it in a couple of weeks. Not here yet. Never been brought yet back to the board. Never been on an agenda since. Mandatory trash pickup. The board said, mandatory trash pickup. Let's have the staff do it. Mr. Hammond came in, ran through some of his notes, as he said, his notes, gave some money, gave out some numbers. Every, two of the commissioners who want mandatory trash pickup and the public who want mandatory trash pickup, now we're the two largest most registered voters in the county, in the two that these two committees said, I'd like to see these numbers. I want to know what's going on. I hear what you're saying, but the numbers confuse me. Please bring them back with a resolution, with numbers, with everything else. Do your research and make the recommendations. This is the third or fourth meeting since that happened. Still no. No numbers presented, no paper presented, no recommendation, no study. I, I can go on with, I'll give you the two that just come to the top of my head. There's several others, Gatorgate, you name it. There's a whole bunch of other issues that are the same thing. So for the convenience of the staff, we are now going to monthly meetings. I sure hope they get better as, they get, as life gets more convenient. I'm through. Okay. I don't want this passed. I don't want monthly meetings, and I don't want this debate agenda I'm, passed. Um, I, I, yes, ma'am. Let me let, let, let the chair have here. He was addressing the chair. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Graney, in our five... Uh, Districts. The largest populous district is District 1, followed by District 5, then District 3. I, I mean, this, this. Take a look at the number of registered voters. That's the issue. All right. Thank they you, sir. The oh, number oh, registered oh, voters. Oh, oh, oh. you have true. a question for yes, the gentleman? I, I do. Would you hold just and a you moment, probably sir? got in prison. Okay. Go ahead. No, no. Oh, uh, okay. The Excuse commissioner me. here has a question for you. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Graney, this is going to sound uh, rough. You're probably going to take it so. or whatever, but I apologize for it. <laughs> but this is the truth. Where did you come from? Were you born in Gulf County? How long have you lived here in Gulf County? I've lived in Gulf County, owned property in Gulf County for 22 years, lived in Gulf County since 1995 when I retired from the U.S. Army. I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Okay. I, lived I, around the world. I, 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 and I've never seen, by the way, I've never seen a county government okay. function like this one. Okay. Wait a minute. Now, I listen to you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I listen to you. I sit here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen to you for six minutes. Gotcha. Um, I've been on this board almost 16 years. Almost 16 years. I've worked with you. I've, on some sides of the fence, I work with you on the other side of the fence. But 99% of the fence you've been against. You've had a problem with this board from day one. It seems like that nobody, nobody is as smart as Mr. Graney, who makes the comment, well, I'm going to be on patrol for um, permits, for ditch draining. You know, I heard it all. But there's two sides of this thing, you know. But you're always negative. You've cost the county. You helped cost the county along with some other people thousands of dollars to fight these bogus lawsuits that y'all disagreed with, that you've disagreed with. This board can do nothing. And I've looked, I've sat on this board with, with several different commissioners over the years. I've seen you do it. Time and time again. So I think my time's up, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to respond to you. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Green. Should I respond Thank to that? If, if you want, he should have a right to respond. Put up. I mean, I don't. The chair will handle this. Yes, you may. Yeah, and for the record, Mr. Chairman, I was speaking to you, not Mr. Graney. Well, okay. I've always spoken to you also. Sure. I asked if I could respond. If you want to respond, uh, commissioners. I have lived in Gulf County, paid taxes in Gulf County for 22 years, lived in Gulf County for 20 of those years. Okay? I am not hostile to this board and never have been hostile to this board. I believe the board should be accountable to the public. My opinion is public, and, and mine isn't so. I mean, I don't, I don't make these things up. I try to avoid these things. 
okay, these boards. I get called by people asking me to go do things like this. I get called by people to talk to my commissioner. So my response to these issues is, uh, oh, I don't know, often negative, I agree. Many times when I come up and say something negative, I pre preface it with something positive or end it with something positive. So I, 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 I disagree that I am negative about this thing, but I am concerned about the rights of this, the, my rights as a public citizen, as, as a resident. One other note about this thing. Again, I'm talking about your procedures. I'm responding. Here's an example of what irritates me or what is a problem with the public. Who, which one of you commissioners told the county staff to go amend these rules and bring them up here or told the county staff to evaluate bi-monthly, bi-weekly meetings versus monthly meetings? The staff is either running amok and wasting time and my money developing these issues or one of you told them and you didn't tell them at a public meeting. Which commissioner asked the attorney to go spend the time to produce a 10-page document, which I think is unnecessary, and waste time and money, and I don't know what you paid the attorney or the rest of them, but I, I, even a first-year law student would have taken a day to do this, so Mr. Novak probably got it done in 15 hours. So my point, my question is, who told them to do this? This? Yeah. You're talking about, you're looking straight at him. When did you tell him? It wasn't at a public meeting. Yes, it was. Not any public meeting I saw. Yes, Which was. one? Do you know? Sir, Commissioner, you want to give the man the date? Uh, public meeting. It was brought up before the board. I'm asking you. I asked the board. Freudian. Very Freudian. I, I asked you the question. Let's, let's move on, Mr. Chairman. Who told the county staff to go from 2 to 5 or 2 to 1 and develop a set of debate procedures? It didn't I, happen in a public meeting. No, you're misleading. I said on this policy this board to follow I asked the attorney not in a public right. meeting yes I did and uh, we it came back he presented it I asked the board to table it till today where they could look it over and see this and that's how I did. yeah yeah I did okay there is no public record of that all right thank you Ms. Mr. Graney Mr. Chairman I have yes. one comment you, you can go and sit I, it's not for you Mr. One, one last comment Jones. I got, and that is, with all apologies to Judy Collins, we should be hearing in the background okay. here, send in the clowns. See you later. And Thank you, Tom. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Chairman, if I may make one comment. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to recognize Commissioner Bryan. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to say that Mr. Tom Graney is a retired colonel from the United States Army, and he, you know, he has fought for this country, and fighting for our country is about liberty freedom and open government and the government is about the people it's not about us up on this board and when commissioners attack people at the board at the podium it scares people from coming up and speaking there are many people who want to come up and be heard or ask questions and they are afraid because they're going to be attacked and a lot of people aren't comfortable with public speaking and they're afraid to come to the podium now we're, we asked for these jobs. We asked people to vote for us. They voted for us, and they put us here. And we need to have thicker skins, and we need to be able to listen to the criticism of the public. And without attacking them, if people come and they, they are critical of what we're doing because they don't like it, and they have a right to be critical, but we shouldn't attack them back. We should let them have their say. doesn't mean we have to do what they have told us to do, but we certainly need to listen to them and consider what they say. And Mr. Chairman, I would ask you to, to stop commissioners from attacking people at the podium because it, it has a chilling effect on the public's participation in our meetings. Covered right here. All right. Any other commissioner? I, I think we've been through there. Anyone else in the public? Uh, Madam Clerk, I know I do. The, uh, Read the motion back. Okay. <laughs> you got to dig back a little bit. You dig way oh. back. Uh, Commissioner McElmore, motion to adopt the policy seconded by um, Commissioner Yeager. I got it right Mr. here. Yeager for All right. Okay. Board has heard the motion. This time we will vote. Is there any opposition motion to adopt? Mr. Chairman, I'm opposed. 
All right, commission, we have one. Oppose, any other? Not. The adoption passes four to one. Thank you. Road bond. Next, we will address road bond, road list distribution. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I left Thursday afternoon and got back last night. But yesterday morning, I talked to Lynn, had <clears throat> Lynn sent out a road list. The road list that each one of you received yesterday morning. you talking it, about this list now? Yes, sir. I'm going to have a new one out. I'm mean, the okay. same list out, but okay. another copy. <clears throat> this list is a list of, it's nothing but a list of graded roads in your district. One good thing about the list is we, we got it tied down. We did some outwork, GIS work on it. We have a map, and, and it's actually in the office there that we can pull out if we need to. It shows the location of these roads uh, in the county. Uh, we're, we're now down with, while we're paving, since we're paving the uh, Jack Daniels Road and, and um, Doc Whitfield Road, we're down to 66 miles of roadways, of graded roads. Some of these roads we have in the county would never be paved, like, Salt Creek Road and other roads, but compared to other counties, you look at the surrounding counties, 400, 500, 600 miles of, of dirt roads, they have to grade. But that's a good thing. We, we got it tied down 25 years ago. We were down to probably 90, <clears throat> 92, 93 miles of dirt roads, maybe like 66. So it really helps out. But the reason for this list, it's a list of dirt roads in, in your district and um. And uh, I know I've got some response from commissioners on which roads you'd like to see paved. And as for dirt roads, you know, which one's better than the other, dirt roads or dirt roads? To me, some roads are more travel than other roads. Some roads have more people living on other roads. Sometimes you have dirt roads in the corner of the county. You have to send a road grader up a long distance just to, to uh, grade a short road. And if we get rid of that short road by paving it, save, save some time with a road grader. But... The reason for handing this list out to you is, is if you can take this list and give us some feedback on which ones you would like to see graded. And the reason, reason we're talking about grading, because the last time we talked about the road bond issue and, and going in and doing some paving, we want to concentrate on, the board want to concentrate on dirt roads as much as practical. In some cases, you're going to have to do some resurfacing work. Uh, but the reason for this, to, to spark discussion, to get started on discussion, you give some feedback on how you want to go, and then we'll go back. And some of these roads are, for instance, some of these roads may be 14 feet wide in some of these areas. Some may be 20, 22 feet wide, probably 20. But um, but once we get that back, we, then we'll go back and run some numbers. But um, I'm, I'm going to hand this list out to you again, same list you got yesterday morning. <laughs> I'm going to ask a question while you're doing it. On this list, is this a, the length of the road in feet? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, also, can we ask what the, sure. the the highlights mean? Anything? Are we roads that are highlighted? Let him hang this and we we'll get to it. God. But this this is it. Uh, I'm addressing right over here now. Uh, <coughs> I know we asked for this several months <clears throat> back, and it's taken a while to get down because I would get calls all the time. The highlights. Well, that's a county road. Well, I said, no, just because you say it's a county don't mean it's a county. we got to go look the records up, and I commend you gentlemen for getting up this. the length of them. Now we know what we've got. There's right, been now. a lot of work. Mark and Lee have done a lot of work, and GIS has done a lot of work. All right, Mr. Butler, you have the floor. District 3, you have uh, four highlighted Roads. It's all turned there on this. We grade those roads, but we don't own those roads. Those are limited maintenance agreement on those roadways. And you'll see some um, in District 1, there's three roads, Tonk Family Road, Inner Robert Cemetery Road, and Book Ridge Road. Uh, two, I don't see any in two. Three, there's those out in Over Street. <coughs> and five, we, we have a limited maintenance agreement on secluded dunes. Uh, Depot Creek, that's from the railroad track, went up from Highway uh, 98 back to the, to the creek, and Painting Pony Road, and we use that during the emergency times when we can't get from the raw water back to the peninsula. But those highlighted ones are those we don't own, but they're we, great. Uh, Thank you. And, and this list is, what we're trying to show you is every road that we grade countywide. And then from this list, if the board's 
desire is to pave um, the roads, then you tell us which one, we'll go back and run numbers. Uh, also, Mr. Butler, I have I met with the city we were Hitchcock yesterday, or their city manager, and he made it a list uh, to go before the board. All of theirs are just resurfacing. I know they will get a portion of this money. It's not much, but theirs is no new payment. It's just we've got some roads up there. Both districts that really need District 1 and District 2. They just need some resurfacing, and it, there's no heavy traffic on it. What I'm talking about, there's no log trucks or big 18 wheelers pulling on these roads. These are just streets that goes into people's homes through neighborhoods, and they just they need attention. I'm sure Commissioner um, went over here, and well, all the commissioners here, but we'll look this list over. But I do have the cities. I don't know if the city of Port St. Joe has submitted. Have they? Do you know or not? They have a said for sure. They can go either way. What we've done in the past, we've done it both ways. In the past, the city of Port St. Joe's handled their own money. In the past, we have handled that money. The amount of money they have is a finite amount of money. So it, it is what it is. And they, if we all want us to handle their roads. Well, now that was the wishes the of the manager, but it's not official to the board. Makes the wishes. That's right. And, the bo and this board accepts it, that we will. Retain their money, yes. If I may I make another comment, I would suggest that these limited maintenance, there's reasons they're, that they're limited maintenance and because in their private roads. I would suggest that we don't pave, as much as I'd like to pave secluded rooms drive so we don't have to run the grader down there from time to time, uh, I just suggest that we don't, we don't pave any of those particular roads. They're not, they're not county roads and... And we yeah. do limited maintenance for a number of different reasons, but I would I would suggest yeah. that we just want to show you so so you can see where the road grader does go, and we highlight those because you're probably not going to pay those roads. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you, uh, yes, I know a couple of commissioners have already got some some of these roads. You want to go ahead and start submitting and getting some numbers run on, and and we take those and if you're ready to lay those out, we'll go ahead and let the engineers start running some numbers. We don't need the engineer road on this list because uh, we don't pay every road on this list. My question, if any of these, and maybe you can answer it or not, any of these, uh, we'll call them roads or streets, if they intersect with a state road, is, what's, uh, is any, uh, does the state have any, uh, are they in the ball game or not? If we, uh, a street that intersects, just like out here in district, we'll use District 3 here, one of those streets, if there's a ties permit. into a state or federal highway, do they have any any if there's a permit list? requirement? The engineer will handle that during design and permitting. Permitting where they tie into a state or federal. Okay. Right. So if you got any roads you want to go ahead and add this list, we'll go ahead and get started on it. Well, I've got the city we will hit you, but I can't make it till the the board uh, makes it official. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm good with them going ahead with mine, Mr. Butler. I'm pretty well familiar and discussed it with you and Michael and, and whatever, you know, on, on a, a wish list. So y'all have that, so, you know, I'm good. Commissioner Quinn? No, I'm good with my, what, good. what, what I submitted to. I'm good uh, with my I, list. I need to get with staff on one or two. Uh, so let me get with staff before I okay. confirm. Mr. Bryan? And I will also get get with staff to Thank you, and the chair is good, but you have my list. Thank you. All right. Let's look them over. Get back with staff, and maybe we can get some of these streets. I know this morning, I think the patch truck will be in probably all day today and tomorrow up, and we were hitching patching patches. <clears throat> we're going to correct that. Okay. Any, th any other on this uh, road bond? Not. No. Good people, let's move on down. The, the number C is the Emergency Beach Driving Ordinance ordin Ratification. Mr. Chairman, at your you. June 23rd meeting, uh, you adopted an Emergency Beach Driving Ordinance. Following that meeting, I had a couple inquiries um, from Constitutional Officer. Uh, also had a discussion with our Sheriff. Um, 
prior to the adoption and also had an opportunity to speak with the judge afterward. I also had a discussion with our DEP, Representative David Frady. Um, during your meeting, you adopted the emergency ordinance and both in the title and section 10 of your ordinance, it gives you the ability to discuss and modify your ordinance during a public hearing, which you did at your June 23rd meeting. What I wanted to do was go back and note three changes in the ordinance that we amended from as a result of that public hearing you had on June 23rd. But I think due to the importance of this ordinance and the attention the public has given to it, I wanted to introduce it to you today right on the heels of July 4th. Um, you changed the ordinance at your last meeting, but those three changes um, were done during the meeting and your discussion, but I wanted to highlight them and ratify them officially on the record so it's very clear for you, the commission, and the public, and also my discussion with the clerk so that it accurately reflected, it's accurately reflected in the minutes of your meeting. So you adopted 2015-08. <clears throat> there was one clerical error on the first page which I highlighted, which was a regular. It's supposed to state the word regulate. Okay, so two letters were changed. If you go to the third page, <clears throat> there's been considerable discussion and comment in the public with regards to beach access areas. Um, after you adopted the ordinance at the last meeting, there was inquiries and discussion as to the commission somehow uh, permitting access from coastal property owners or beachfront property owners in violation of state law or state statute. Um, I've had those discussions, but you'll see the uh, amendments to it. What we've done is we've strengthened the language from your conversation. We talked about private property rights at your last public hearing on the 23rd. We talked about beach access area and that folks that wanted to access their the beach from their properties that was lawful under state statute could continue to do that. In my discussions with the sheriff as well, he needs to have the ability to properly interpret and enforce the ordinances that you all adopt. So what we've done is we've added the language that remain, in quote, that remain in strict compliance with all other state and local laws. Um, there was a clerical, it was 161.242, it's 161.58. Um, we added the language non-disturbance and native vegetation, but everything else stayed the same. Um, and again, just for emphasis, Section B is there to continue to enable if someone had legal access to the waterfront historically from their property and do not violate state statute, well, they have still have the rights under state law to do that. What this ordinance speaks to, and prior to this ordinance had the same language, is the county doesn't supersede or usurp the state law. The county doesn't get involved, obviously, with their rights under the state statute, nor could the county contradict it. So B, you'll see the language only strengthens that. And just to make it clear to the public, if you disturb native vegetation and accessing the beach from your property, you're in violation of the state statute. If you go to the very end with regards to Section 7 and the violation and fines under Section 7A, it was simultaneously request the penalty to be reduced to a total of $100 and speaking with the judge and just to expedite the efficiency of the clerk's office and being able to process these citations, we've changed the word request to the word shall. So it's not at the discretion, it, it is if they buy a $300 beach driving tag within seven days, their fine shall be reduced to a total of $100 in addition to the $300. So they won't pay a $500 fine anymore. They'll pay a $100 fine if they buy an annual beach driving tag. You want to, just just for people here and the ones that be watching on television, why don't you just read A under Section 7? Just read it in its entirety. Yes, sir. Violation of this ordinance shall be punishable as follows. Driving on the beach without first having obtained a valid permit shall result in a fine of $500 for a first-time offense. For a second offense, the fine shall be $750. Upon issuance of a citation, the violator may purchase a beach driving permit through the Gulf County Tax Collector's Office within seven calendar days of the receipt of the violation and thereafter upon proof of identification and proof of purchase of an annual permit to the clerk of court may elect to enter a guilty plea to the citation and simultaneously shall reduce the penalty to a total of $100 in addition to the annual permit fee paid. Good. So those three uh, changes uh, from the discussion at your last meeting um, represented that, but I would ask that you all ratify those changes so it's clearly on the record and that we can move forward. You've already adopted it as an emergency ordinance, um, but if there's any questions, I'd be happy to address those three highlighted areas that resulted from your discussions during your public hearing on the 23rd. If not, I would ask for a vote of the board to approve it. So, so move to adopt, Mr. Chairman, with those. Uh, they're clarification changes, but they were needed to put in. So, Second. So. Second. All right. Have a motion. 
Commissioner Yeager. Second by Commissioner McLemore. Any of the uh, this affects district, primarily District 3 and District 5. Do you? Five, mostly. Commissioners have any? Uh, there's no driving on District 3. It's strictly District 5. All right. These ratify this. Any other, anyone in, out in the audience have any questions? We have two gentlemen here. Sir, you can come up first, and we'll get you. Vince Bishop, 7081 Windward Street. Uh, on the, uh, when you addressed people that own the property have the ability to have their own accesses, you know, they can build a, a ramp or something or they're not disturbed the vegetation and allow beach access that way. Is that, you know, when we have periods of high tides and storms and the sheriff closes the beach, how are we going to close the beach to these people who have their private accesses? And then also, if these people have their private accesses, are they going to allow their neighbors to drive over it too? And so I say if I have a development on the beach, I build a, a private access on somebody's property and then let everybody in the neighborhood drive over it and they have their own access. So that's kind of a clarification I'd like to hear. All right, we will freeze his time over here. Mr. Tony, you want to address I'll be that? happy to freeze his time now. Um, Vince, the county has not changed the law with regards to individuals' access to if they have private property rights. Um, the county is not stating in the ordinance that they have the ability or future permission to do it. They have to go through DEP. They have to go through the proper permitting process, both the state and the local level, to build any type of boardwalk across those dunes. So the county hasn't changed the law at all in terms of future interpretation. It was a reinforcement of what was already on the books. So the sheriff and his deputies now know what is permissible and what is not. But if someone has legal access, and there are incidents of legal access along Gulf County's 27 miles of beaches, the county is not going to cite someone for a lack of interpretation or a lack of enforcement. It, if they violate state statute, then they're subject to those fines. If they are not, there's nothing in the county ordinance that prohibits them from that access. In terms of future erosion and the, the high tide and where the water line, mean water line moves to, you know, obviously that is, there's emergency situations when we have storm events. You know, the ordinance doesn't speak to it, but like I said, I, the ordinance can't speak to hypotheticals either. So. Right, but that's my concern because we've had times where we've closed the beach due to high tides because it's coming right up against the dune lines, and so if you have, and they're closed at one place, but if, if you, you know, it's like you're closing it to people that normally get into this place, but now you're keeping the beach access open to people who have their own private yeah, accesses. Yeah. and I understand. If the county closes the beaches due to an emergency uh, de declaration then that is enforceable by the sheriff. So if someone is driving on the beach in violation of an emergency declaration, they're in violation of the ordinance and, the st and however they access them, maybe by the statute. But if they're driving on the beach during a declaration, then they're in violation of the ordinance. Okay, but how do they know about this declaration? It's done during a public meeting called as an emergency meeting by the county commission. Well, it normally it happens like, you know, like within hours. It, it does. And it's usually during a storm event, but they'll have a formal meeting. They'll make a declaration between Mr. Marshall's office and the county commission, and it is a proclamation to the county uh, declaring a state of emergency, and that they restrict it. Over and beyond that, Vince, what we've tried to do lately, and you've been involved with that, is work with the sheriff, and when there's areas that it's just too many people and it's, it's a public safety issue, the sheriff has the ability to comb that off, and he has done so. We have, we've put more effort, I think, in maintaining the integrity of that beach lately than, 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 than we've done in the past. And we're continuing to try to regulate to make sure that we do the best that we can possibly do to have access to that beach, but yet regulate and make sure that everything's done safely and permittable. And I think what we've done with this uh, ordinance has clarified for the sheriff what exactly the intent is. And we will continue to work with the sheriff when it's times when it's uh, dangerous, especially on the Cape Beach. There's, there's m much more erosion there from time to time on the Cape Beach. The sheriff has done that multiple times. He, he's called me several times, said, "One, I'm shutting the beach now. I just want you to know, so you, if somebody complains, you can do So, and, and I support that, and we support that. And we'll continue to listen to you residents to, when you say, look, it's, it's getting pretty narrow, and there's a lot of folks out there. The sheriff goes down and takes a look at that. So we're basically we're trying to make sure that we do everything that we can to regulate and, and make sure everybody's doing what they need to do down there. Okay. We'll continue to do that. All right. Thanks, Vince. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, 
to, to, to Vince's comments as well, and I know some other folks may be here on the issue, I did speak with Mr. Frady, DEP, and he wanted to make sure that the county's interpretation of the ordinance was consistent with the state's, and it is. They are in step with one another, and it's a clear, they both, uh, we, our ordinance is consistent with the way the, the state and the DEP views access to those beaches, um, and we'll continue to uh, enforce our ordinance accordingly. I think we have a young man over here. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Phil Perkins, uh, 160 Aruba Drive. Um, I read the uh, star and uh, the article says, um, but includes language that upholds the rights of coastal homeowners in possession of a driving permit to enter the beach from their property. And I said, is that, how could that be? It sounds like to me, now this is the article, it sounds like to me that if you have a beach driving permit and you own Gulffront property, it says uh, to enter the beach from their property, that you can just drive right over the dune onto the beach. So I went down to the sheriff's office and I got the actual law in uh, this paragraph B that you're referring to. It do th this does have legal access points listed, but if you, if you go to page three, Section 2, paragraph B, about in the middle of that paragraph, it says, Gulf County Beach and Waterfront property owners with proper annual permitting of vehicles shall be permitted access directly to those authorized beach areas, that would be the Cape, for driving from their directly adjacent beach and waterfront properties. It sounds like to me that if you've got a go front property, you get the permit, you can just drive right on them. All right, again. hold him again. Let, let's I, go over here. And I, I wouldn't ask you, sir, respectfully, I wouldn't ask you to read the rest of the sentence, but I can if you okay. want. You have to read the whole thing. So Let him. Uh, there are, don't come the rest of, legal hold up, sir. Hold up just a minute. Hold up. We're going to get back to you. When, the rest of the sentence reads, be permitted access directly to those authorized beach areas for driving from their directly adjacent waterfront properties that remain in strict compliance with all other state and local laws. So they can't violate state or local laws in access to those beaches. So if it's unlawful, then they're in violation of the ordinance. And that is for the sheriff to determine. Okay. What, I guess what I'm saying is the language is confusing. I, I, I acknowledge that it says legal access points in here also, et cetera. Yes, I'm aware of that. Um, you know, I, I've been down to a couple of commission meetings. This is the second one with the five commissioners here, and I came to a couple uh, co uh, commission uh, meetings uh, with the previous commissioners. And truthfully, I don't know what you guys are talking about because I don't know any of this business of the county. But I live on the Gulf, uh, and, and I know about that beach, and I know about that water. And driving on the beach is the stupidest thing possible. Um, I'm walking on the beach yesterday, and um, I stopped, and two uh, golf carts pulled up right beside me. And I thought, great, these are tourists. I want to see if they've got a permit on the back of this thing. And I heard one of them say, there it is right there. And uh, they made a big U-turn, and I looked like this to see if there's a sticker on the back. I didn't get a chance to look for the sticker because they had it right for the dune at Cancun Drive, and both of them went right over that dune, right over the sea oats, right over the dune. So I followed them off the, uh, the beach, and I'm not saying anything to these people. I live out there. I know I don't talk to the renters because you don't know what kind of response you're going to get. You tell somebody you can't do something, you don't know. So my intention was to find out which unit they pulled up underneath. And I saw them go up Cancun, they turned right onto Cape San Blast Road, and they went on down. I had the uh, beach patrol officer come out and uh, I told him his story. He said, well, show me. So we walked up the beach. I said, here's the big U-turn that they took, and you can see that their track's coming over the dune over here. And I said, now that I look at it closer, 
um, I can see there's two different sets of tracks, which was the two vehicles. Okay, now, um, as it turns out, I think the officer, Officer uh, Harvey, um, uh, found us that there, you know, all it is is just going down a few blocks and looking uh, up underneath to see where the, where the, uh, uh, the golf cart is. And this, I said, I said, they're, they're both of them had uh, two seats up front, two seats in the back. And I believe he found one of them. I don't know the outcome of it, but that was just last night. The last time I found someone was last fall when they were coming over that exact same access point. Um, that's the reality of driving on the beach, period. I'm not talking about beach patrol. I'm not talking about the turtle people. I'm talking about driving, anyone on the beach. The beach has now, um, I was here last fall. The beach is now, I'm going to say, roughly 80 feet. And I have checked with um, MRD to see the, the coastal engineer. I have checked with them. Um, and they told me specifically that at Aruba Drive, they put 250 feet of uh, beach out there. It's down to 80 feet. So when you were passing your emergency um, driving uh, ordinance, what you didn't know, because I've also asked, I started asking people, uh, do you live out here at the beach or do you live in Port St. Joe? I guess they think I'm nosy. No, I'm, I'm trying to find out if anybody actually knows what's going on out there. And what I'm guessing is the case is the people in, that work for the county don't live out there, so they really don't know. Because when you were passing, this had this emergency meeting about the driving, at that time there were extreme curb ends. Um, I, it, it got so bad that I, I, I said, I better check to see if there's some kind of tropical storm coming out of us. I, did, I didn't know. And as it turns out, there was a storm off of uh, Cancun. It wasn't a tropical storm at the time, but it was a gigantic rainstorm. And it eventually came up the Gulf, went into to Houston, went on up to Midwest. And that was what was causing this, this erosion. We had from... Where, where Pristine Realty would be, which is Antilles uh, Drive, down to um, uh, Sunrise Sunset. Uh, Mr. Perkins, you're, we've let you run over a little on your time. Okay. Let, let the chair come in on here. First of all, I commend you for these vehicles and contacting the sheriff. Uh, you know, I wish we could uh, had enough uh, all about money the sheriff had enough officers he could put there and people like you and more you're not trying to be nosy or offensive you, and you're right the people don't drive over these news they should have known better than to do that and track them down and I don't know the results of this officer we have nothing to do with the uh, law enforcement but it, it or a good neighbor watch. Uh, we have neighbor watches everywhere to keep out. And get a description of it, and if it's got a tag, get it and turn it in to the sheriff. And I'm sure he'll he'll do a follow up. What I'm trying to tell you is that between the erosion, I know it, and the, at the time of this emergency meeting, you couldn't drive. You couldn't anybody drive on the beach because there was such extreme curb ends that my neighbor, uh, I I let them know because they're absentee. Um, their beach was eroding and eroding and eroding, and then it started taking their dune. It took out their uh, 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 stairway walk walkover, and uh, he's got an escarpment now of 8 to 10 feet. But you minutes. have to under, uh, Mr. Mr. Perkins, just a minute, I'll, and then we're going to cease here, because I think we've answered your question with the attorney about that you just can't drive over dunes. That was one of the original questions you asked. But uh, the sheriff over here, he can, uh, if that beach is, uh, as we stated before in here, the sheriff deems it necessary. And he's, well, he, he don't wait till it's too late to do it. He can he can shut her down. He has say, that authority. I would say pretty much uh, from the trading post south, you've got a congestion of, of uh, uh, houses there. <laughs> you've got Gulf Front first tier and, third, right. and second tier. And that means that there's a lot of renters that are going to be on the beach. You've got a small beach now. And uh, that means they've got all their, their paraphernalia, a lot of weaving in and out. Right. And then you factor in the, uh, the high tides and some of these uh, storm situations. 
uh, you can't drive in, in, in when it's high tide because you can unless you're going to be driving through the water. All right, sir. I thank the commission. Thank you, sir. I thank uh, the, the commissioner thing I, I don't over want to here. This. I just want you to Please. understand the sheriff is, is, is doing a, a great job at monitoring those now. If you, you have uh, a, a, a number to the sheriff's office, any of those issues that you have, just, just shoot the uh, uh, sheriff's office a, a call I, and they'll, I, I they'll call address them, it. I call them if I see anybody driving over the dune. That's good because those but are the people a, we want off the beach. It, it's just a, a contributing to this, this whole situation. The reason this is is a big deal to me is because I, I've been here for 11 years with Ivan. There was a house that, that was undermined, had to be moved back to the road, and that left a, a, an empty lot with a driveway. And people started driving over that dune so constantly that when Dennis came, it washed out not just the dune, it washed out the whole lot. And it was putting water back by, behind my house. Uh, to you know the next lot so I know how devastating it is when somebody drives over the dune so if you have people driving on the beach they're going to drive over that dune they they've made their statement as, as to leave no trace what it means to them. I'm talking about the renters the, the tourists they've made their statement about leave no trace is their their opinion of your law not mine your law is that hey we're going to do anything we can <coughs> And that's why they're leaving that stuff out on the beach. Good deal. All right, sir. Okay. Mr. Perkins, thank you, sir. All right, let's call for the vote on this. Calling for the vote. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I, I, thought I already no, made a motion on that. What? Okay. <coughs> I know you are. I know you are, and I don't know where the commission. Pat Hardman, very quick. Pat, very quick. Oh, please, please, thank you. Um, back to the the ordinance itself, the confusion and the concern of many of the people in the CCA meeting. You've got about as many people that want to drive out there as as don't. Okay, and the CHCA, we've not ever been against driving. The concern that, that was brought up by the people who are living in my neck of the woods, not only Cape, which is a whole different issue, a peninsula, is that the way this language is put now makes it, people are meaning to assume that they can now start driving out. And and all you got to do is to take that language out and say they got to go by the state law. Yeah, and, that's yeah. what, the, that's what it says. If, yeah. if there's people... Those are intelligent people out there. I know, but if I they cannot understand that they have to follow state statute and it is in the ordinance, I don't know what else to do. I'm not going to take that language out. The language is in there that you have to you have to go by the state statute. I don't know what more to argue the because I had intelligent yeah. people that's called me about that, and once I explained it, they said, "Well, okay, I understand, but it is in the ordinance." I agree, and I, that but they the have concern, to follow state right, statute, and I don't know how to be any any plainer and more clear to that. You cannot drive over the dune. You cannot drive over the edge, the vegetation, and they know that. Then they and we are have, not sanctioning that. We are sanctioning state statute. Well, and I have explained that so many times that I, I, I just don't know how the to The driving people continue. are concerned, Warren, that with them now doing this, um, that we're going to have DEP or U.S. Fish and Wildlife come in and close our driving altogether. Huh. So, I mean, that's, that is a major concern of a lot of people in my neck of the woods that, that do, we do have drivable beaches. And I've been that's here it. for 15 years, and I've had, it, it, the staff will tell you I've had multiple, multiple meetings with state agencies and federal agencies. We and we have protected that beach driving because you don't have you have limited access to some of those beaches. The the most pristine beaches that we access, I have to get a the county has to get a permit every five years from Eglin to be able to use that property. And we're in the process of doing that right now. We have fought for that. We'll continue to fight for that. But, uh, but I don't know how any more plain that we can we, put we that. We need to try out. to get the information out as much as we right. can. Okay. You can't just run across without getting right. permits. Thank you, thank you, Doctor. All right, we're calling for the vote. Go on, Mr. Chair. We've, we've already got the motion and motion second. Motion and the second. Need four votes. You have the, uh, okay. read it back. Um, Commissioner Yeager moved to ratify the changes in the, uh, the ordinance and Commissioner McLemore seconded. All right. Does the board understand? All right. Any opposition? Not. Motion passed. 4-0 for the, uh, 
Thank you. Mr. Yeager. Well. Oh, Lord. Taking care of that. We have two more items. and Next one is uh, number D, RV permit fees. RV permit fees. Chairman, <clears throat> RV permits in the in the coastal corridor as a requirement in ordinance to have a permit attached to the vehicle in some shape, form, or fashion. <clears throat> we have a we have worked up a permit application for that, and we're recommending you that you charge. It, it was not our intent. It, we don't think it's the intent of the board to make money off of this. It's to at least break even with this. And a twenty dollar charge would cover for our time for one proof of valid registration or recreational vehicle with DMV, <clears throat> two proof of valid and current insurance for the RV second use permit, three signed affidavit of compliance, and four the check made payable to Gulf County in the amount of twenty dollars. So a recommendation to the board is the county commission charge twenty dollars and it'll be handled through the building department. George is set up for it. Radonna will be taking most of the the fees. All right. Recommendation. Thank you, Thank you sir. I have a motion. Twenty dollar. So move, Mr. Chair. All right. I've got a motion by Commissioner Wynn. I have a second. This uh, motion. I have a second with this motion. Chair is going to vacate. Turn the to the vice chair, and the chair will second <coughs> Mr. Quinn's motion for this twenty dollars. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Quinn, second by Mr. McDaniel. For discussion. No, nope, it's to vote on the twenty dollar yeah, recommendation. I wanna, I'm gonna discuss it. All right. Open for discussion. Yeah. I have a, I have a real issue with the twenty dollar permit fee. Let me ask you this: <clears throat> When you when you when you put a twenty dollar permit fee on an RV, I know you said the corridor, but is that county wide, or is that just the corridor? I want that clear. I'm speaking to to the coastal corridor on the twenty dollar. <clears throat> okay, I'm good with that. I'm I'm good. All right, thank you, thank you, Commissioner. All right, anyone in the audience on this? Maybe it, we want to hear from George, maybe. Uh, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mr. McMore will finish the motion and yeah, end the discussion. Yeah, you got to do that. Oh. Relinquish chair back. You still have. Okay, let, let's, go ahead and, let's go ahead and discuss this to make sure. Come up, George, to make sure, Mr. Attorney, that, Thank you. that we understand it along with our ordinance yeah. that we have because it's my understanding that we're finna charge everybody twenty dollar permit fee for every trailer house in the county. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, uh, section three C reads as follows: All RVs within Gulf County Coastal Construction Corridor shall be registered registered annually and receive a permit from the county for display. The issued permit shall be prominently displayed by the RV owner and clearly visible to county officials. So Section 3C1 states it is solely to the con Coastal Construction Corridor, in which will be annually registered and tagged. Okay. Well, and I, and I understand that. Yeah. Since I am charged with the task of issuing these permits, uh, I just had a question here. Under the check the permit application for which you wish to apply, if it's only in the corridor, the, uh, the second one is the unrestricted areas further landward than one mile, which means out of the corridor. So... For those, this twenty dollars wouldn't apply. That's correct. They would, but they would still be permitted. You still register them. They don't require a permit. Twenty dollar fee. I understand. Okay. Thank you. That clears that up. Thank you. Okay. I had a, I have a motion by Mr. by Mr. Quinn, second by Mr. McDaniel. Any further discussion on it? How do you vote, Mr. Quinn? For it, Mr. Chairman. And the uh, chair votes yes. So motion passes three zero. 
I pass the chair back to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Next item we have in the final, but ship funding or nation review. I think uh, uh, we're going to, Mr. Paul, would you please come up and uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Thank you, sir. Coffee is a necessity. Uh, I have a couple of things before you, and uh, Mr. Hammond, I do have the one we talked about. Yeah, uh, got the first thing I have is I presented to you uh, three letters that I would request that the board approve the chairman to sign for ship rehabilitations. The first one is for Miss Marathal Daniels on Robbins Avenue in Port St. Joe. The other one is for Mr. Lester Hand on Hand Circle in Weewahitchka. And the third is Mary Sintel Davis on Woodward Avenue in Port St. Joe. These are all rehabs that uh, are all very low income, and uh, we need to spend the money. And I would request your approval on that first, and then I have another item after that, please. Good deal. We'll address it first. I have a motion. Yes, you do, Mr. Chairman. I have a second. Yes, sir. I have a motion and a second. Your recommendation. Uh, any more board discussion for this? Anyone in the audience? Not all we uh, the opposition. His recommendation. Motion <laughs> passed 3-0. and oh. All right, that take care of the Daniels, Hands, and Davis. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, we also have one that, that came to me with a request for subordination from a Sonia Yvette Farmer. Uh, what we did was we provided purchase assistance to her in the amount of $11,615 on the 29th day of July, 2005. Okay. Uh, in doing that, our, our mortgage and promissory note is good for 10 years. She's actually doing a refinance of the property with no money out. If we were to subordinate, we would be subordinating $70.98 because the 29th day of July this year, 2015, is the 10-year date which you approved to forgive all loans. Uh, I am recommending that we go ahead and issue a satisfaction of mortgage so that she can continue with her subordination. She has done all but 22 days. The actual per diem rate is $3.23 a day, so if we subordinate, we'll be subordinating $70.98. My recommendation is that we satisfy the mortgage and move forward. So move, Mr. Chairman. All right, got a motion by Commissioner McElmore. Satisfy Set. this debt. Do I have a second? Yes, sir, a second. Got a second by Commissioner Quinn. Any further discussion on this? $70.98. Is that it? That's it, sir. Right, anyone in the audience? Usually, this is the problem at first, this loan. It, just a real quick clarification. Sure. The, the problem that she had was that she's refinancing her house, and the refi deadline was like the 17th or 18th of this month, so it was going to fall 10 days too too late. So we're going to clear her up. That's great. Go. That's great. And, Maybe it'll help her. And, Commissioner, in our discussion, it's, you know, it's a lot easier for us to do that when they've done 99.9% .9 of the 10 years than if they only did two or three years. Just a matter of reference, we've got another one that actually the gentleman sold his house for cash money, and we're going to be realizing a good chunk of that back of a uh, rehab that we did actually in 2012. Good deal. So we'll, we'll be getting money back on that one. All right. And, and I want to apologize for not uh, – I know her only by the way it says here, Sonia Farmer, when you said Yvette to me, my head went crazy. <laughs> and I, but I finally remembered it and went and got it. Thank All you. right, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for a job well done. All right. Is any other, anyone in the audience? No. All right. Is any opposition? This motion, if not, the motion passed 3 and 0. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have any, any of the board, anyone? I want to take a moment to thank you. We've, we're done for the day. I'll be very brief. Before you adjourn, I'll be very brief. Do what? Special meeting. You've concluded your five items. You've concluded special public. Uh, so unless you want to suspend your current policy that you just adopted, unless you suspend the policy, then there is no public discussion. Okay. Thank you for clarification, Mr. Attorney. All right. I have a motion to adjourn. I have a second.
This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Mr. Commissioner, you missed my opportunity to compliment.